hear a bird here that were completely destroyed, but then the birds here are left undamaged. You have a obliterated bird here and here and here, but then undamaged birds here and here. And so in this case, about half of the, am of the animals are destroyed. The other half are left undamaged, which is peculiar. What's leading the people to get rid of some of the images, but not others? And I wish I could explain this, but I can't. And there were other examples where some or most, but not all of the images are removed. In other cases, every single one of the dozens of images in any given floor are, in fact, damaged. Others where it's sort of only partially done, and I can't just quite figure out just what's going on here. Well, another sort of puzzle with just what the people have in mind when they are doing this destruction of images comes in a church in Jordan at the site called Umar Asas, where of the more than 100 different images of people and animals, we, we've, we've seen a few previous uh, photos of, of some of the damaged mosaics at Umar Asas here, all of them are destroyed except for this one fish in a bowl. So every other single image in this mosaic floor, of over more than 100 of them, are damaged except this one. Now what's special about this fish? It's not any special location within the mosaic floor, but they deliberately choose to leave this one undisturbed. Now the thought occurs to me that this is a dead fish, it's in a bowl, whereas all the other images are alive, they're depicting animals that are alive, but this one is dead. Well, is that the reason? Well, maybe, maybe not. As with so many other puzzling features, I can't think of any better reason why they would leave this one image undamaged in the floor. Well, anyway, and so then also in this same floor, it gets even more curious with this depiction of the Nile River with then these two boys in the boats that have their, their heads scrambled up. And there is a depiction of a phoenix here. You have a sun disk with sun rays of what had been a depiction of a phoenix, which are then destroyed like all the other images in, in this mosaic floor, except in the patch they put a fish. Now this I find really weird. If you are taking the effort to get rid of all of the images of living beings in your mosaic floor, why in your patch would you put a living being? Why would you put a fish in the patch of your attempt to get rid of all of the images of living beings? And so this this, this puzzles me no end as to what these people in this church think they are trying to accomplish by obliterating all of the images except that fish in the bowl and this fish in the patch. And so, so I, I cannot account for this at all. One of the many mysteries with each mosaic having its own idiosyncrasies, and that's the, the, the really most peculiar uh, feature just of why these people are, are doing what they do in general, wanting to get rid of their images, but so many peculiarities when they don't do it thoroughly, don't do it carefully, or put an image in place of an image. Well, there are dozens of churches where this damage occurs. I drew this map a few years ago. There are further excavations every year that produce one or two more examples. And no, this map has filled up a little bit since I drew this a few years ago. But it's, a, again, a peculiarity, the limited geographical area 
where this damage has occurred. It's only within modern-day Israel-Palestine, Jordan. Nowhere else. Not in Syria, not in Lebanon, not in Egypt, not in North Africa, not in Anatolia, Greece, the Balkans. Nowhere else does this damage occur except in this small geographical area. No. There is one example in far north Syria, but otherwise it's all this limited geographical area. And so what's so special about this small region as opposed to everywhere else in the Eastern Mediterranean, I don't understand. There are plenty of other mosaics from you know, the early Islamic period that might have been damaged if people elsewhere had wanted to do this damage. This, for example, a mosaic in a church in Syria dating to 722 with its dedicatory inscription that it would most definitely was not damaged. And so I can't really adequately explain why the damage is focused to this very small geographical uh, area. Well, one of the more recent discoveries of a mosaic floor with this kind of deliberate damage uh, was discovered in the spring of 2009 at a church just south of Amman as the government was widening the main road to the airport, slicing through the hill, just leaving that to be excavated as a salvage uh, project by the Department of Antiquities. And you have then this church with, 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 I don't have a good photo of the mosaics, but it suffers the same kind of deliberate damage. And what's curious about the dedicatory inscription is that we have a reference to the patron of the church being the Arab tribal leader, al Mundir, the Ghassanid tribal leader at the end of the sixth century. And then it's built under the aegis of the bishop Palioktos and curiously two servants named Abdullah and Dionysius with these curious Arabic and Hellenistic names being the servants under whose auspices this church gets built at, at this time at the end of the sixth century. Well, Almundir is known to be a supporter of those Christians who rejected the theological uh, pronouncements at the Council of Chalcedon in 451 about the, the nature of Christ. And so we have many of these churches are being used by people who approve of the proceedings of the Council of Chalcedon, but also churches with opponents of the Council of Chalcedon. So every Christian denomination in the area are doing this damage. Uh, it's not one Christian group and another doesn't. It's everybody, both Chalcedonians and people who oppose uh, the Chalcedonians. So every, every Christian group is doing this uh, damage. And there's other churches where you definitely have opponents of the Council of Chalcedon doing the damage. Other churches that are definitely Chalcedonians, they're doing it. So every Christian group is doing it. Also, we have the, the question of Jews are also doing this deliberate damage. And you may know that Jews have no problems with having images in their mosaic floors, this spectacular zodiac uh, from a synagogue uh, from in, in northern Israel, a place called Beit Alpha, where you know, Jews are perfectly comfortable having uh, images of you know, zodiacs or whatever in their, in their uh, uh, synagogues. But there are also then s some examples where in synagogues the same deliberate elimination of images is, is happening. And there's one very good example, a, site, a synagogue called Susia, uh, south of uh, Hebron, where we have a very clear example of a synagogue suffering this same uh, amount of, of the deliberate uh, uh, damage. And so it's clear it's this desire to get rid of images transcends Christian 
theology. It's also Jews doing the same thing at uh, the same uh, time. Well, and so then the question, when is this damage happening? There are a number of churches that have dated dedicatory inscriptions. So the damage has to have happened after the date of the inscription. So it's, it is happening after the dates uh, on this list. Most interestingly, after 762, that's the latest mosaic floor in which there are images that then later on get deliberately uh, destroyed. This 832 is a highly speculative date, but anyway, 762 uh, looks to me that it serves as also the date after which these other earlier floors also uh, were damaged. And this date puts us into the Abbasid period. The Abbasid revolution of 749-750 is when the Abbasid line of caliphs replaces the earlier Umayyad line of, of caliphs. And there are major social, political, economic you know, changes that take place as a result of the coming to power of this new line of uh, caliphs in 749-750. Uh, well, one thing then, it seems to me that this deliberate damage is happening then in the first decades after the Abbasid uh, revolution of 749-750. And one manifestation of this early on is the choice of Christians to no longer install mosaics with images. We have a mosaic here that is purely geometric in design, uh, dated 756. Six years after the revolution, the Christians are choosing to have mosaics that are purely geometric, no longer with uh, images in them. And is this just happenstance, or is this reflecting a changed social situation where Christians are saying, well, we don't like images anymore, we'll will put in a new mosaic floor that's purely geometric. Well, then the last mosaic floor that has images in it is this one dated to 762. All of the later mosaic floors, and there's a handful still later, are then purely geometric or have the vegetal uh, designs, no longer any with images after this one of 762. So I'm sort of thinking that this is happening sometime in the early Abbasid period, and this is an example of, of this uh, church of uh, the 760, showing the details of, of the type of damage that, that, that's happening. Well, so then the, the motivation why remains the big uh, uh, question. Why are Christians and Jews in the first decades of the Abbasid period obliterating their images. There's no obvious Christian or Jewish theological motivation for this. There's no explicit literary source that says in the year so-and-so the Christians and the Jews damage their images. I'm inclined to think it's all happening more or less the same time in these early years of the Abbasid uh, period with perhaps a response to a hardening attitude that the Abbasid government is now adopting towards their non-Muslim uh, population. There's another manifestation uh, of something that the Christians are doing also more or less at the same time that they're damaging the images, is that the Christians are coming to realize that they are, in fact, not any longer citizens of the Byzantine Empire. It's now 120, 130 years after the Muslim conquest of the 630s, and it's at this point that the Christians stop proclaiming themselves as loyal citizens of the Byzantine state. 